everyone, and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care podcast and video. I'm Dwayne. I'm a certified RV inspector, and today we're going to be talking about RV water damage. How serious is it? How can you catch it early and maybe prevent it altogether? Well, let me start by saying this. Water intrusion is the biggest enemy of RVs, period. It's often very silent. You don't even know it's going on, but it's deadly. Because over time, water seeping in can ruin an RV's entire structure. It breaks down walls and ceilings and floors and becomes very expensive to repair. Now, why is that, that RVs with water damage are so expensive to repair? Well, it's because there's a lot of spots on RVs that are hard to get to and hard to work on. For instance, if you have a leak in your roof that produces damage, you're probably going to need to peel back the whole roof membrane in that area, maybe even remove some of the components like air conditioners to do the repair and make it right. How about RV walls? Well, RV walls these days are very often vacuum bonded or pinch rolled together, and they're just one big solid piece. So if water gets in and causes the outer skin to separate from the inner wall, we call it delamination. You've probably seen it on RVs. It's big puffy bubbles on the side. Well, that kind of damage is almost impossible to fix and fix right easily. Next up are floors, and that's the catch-all for leaks, because if water comes in on the roof or the walls, it goes down, and it often pulls on the floor. If there's damage, you're going to have to pull up the flooring and fix it. I think you can see that water damage in an RV is often very laborious, time-consuming, and expensive work to do. Sometimes, in fact, the damage is so extensive and expensive, it's not even worth doing it, and I've seen that. So let's talk now about how water gets in to an RV first. And it's a good thing to know, so we need to know how RVs are put together. Basically, at the factory, they start with a frame, and then they put the floor on the frame, the walls are attached to that, and then the roof goes on. Now, wherever the walls meet one another, or where they meet the ceiling, the roof, there is a seam, there's a joint there, and that is an excellent place for water intrusion. Also, on the roof, there are installed items, usually, like air conditioners and ceiling vents and antennas, and the list goes on and on. Well, wherever they cut a hole in the roof for those items, that is an excellent spot for water leaks and water damage to begin to take place. So at the factory, they combat all of that on a roof by using self-leveling lap sealant to seal around those areas on the joints and around the components. And what that is, is sealant that as you apply it, it basically spreads out and levels out and covers a wide area. And it works very good on RV roofs. The next spot where you can have a problem is on the walls, the sides of the RV, where they meet the end caps. Usually there is a seam or joint that runs down there. Once again, at the factory, they use lots of sealant in those areas, not self leveling because you don't want it to drip down the side of the RV. Instead, they use a sealant that stays where you put it as you apply it. The next spot where you can have a problem with water intrusion is around windows in your walls. This is a very common spot. Maybe the window wasn't installed correctly to begin with. Maybe it's not as tight as it should be. Maybe there's a problem with the seal, but water can get in, go under the window. That's usually where you see the problem. And then it goes down onto the floor. Now, all of these places 
are spots where water intrusion happens commonly. It's very common to see it happen in those places. But honestly, water problems are not usually a major issue on new RVs that come from the factory. That's because they put the factory installed sealant in those areas. And usually they're very liberal with it and sealant in those areas can last for the first few years or so of the RV's life without any special attention. But eventually, any sealant that is applied on an RV is going to start to wear and age. Now, I believe that you can extend the life of much sealant on an RV if you're vigilant. You constantly pay attention to seams and joints and around components on the roof and so on. Then if you see the sealant beginning to wear, some small cracks taking place, it's time to reseal. First of all, you clean the sealant very good and then reseal in those areas to extend the life of the sealant. Now, I know there's a lot of people that don't agree with that. They think you need to completely replace it right away. But personally, I have seen that if you're vigilant and you stay up with things, you can extend the life of sealant by resealing along the way. But there is going to come a point where sealant just wears out. It's old. And at that point, you're going to have to heat it up, take a tool and scrape it out, and then reapply it. None of this is fun to do, and it's not very easy. And if you pay someone else to do it, it will be expensive. And this will have to be done not only on the roof, seams and joints, but on the sides as well. So what all of this calls for is that you be vigilant and inspect seams, seals, and sealant on your RV all the time on the outside. If a leak happens, well, how serious is it going to be? Honestly, the answer to that is it depends. It depends on how early you detected the leak. If you found it early and a little water got in, but not a lot, honestly, it's probably not going to be a really big issue if you fix the leak right away and get it taken care of. This is why every RVer, I believe, should be very vigilant and constantly examine seams, joints, sealant, all of that on their RV on a regular basis because you can catch problems early and stay ahead of them. Here's another way that you can keep an eye for water damage. And this is something that a lot of people don't do, but every few months or so, if you'll go through your RV, take your hand and push it against the walls, up and down all around the RV. Feel for soft spots. Look for water spots or water damage that shows in those areas. Do the same with the ceiling. With the floors, take your shoes off and walk every inch of that floor and feel for soft spots. This is a great way to catch water damage that you couldn't have caught any other way. Now, if you'll follow that advice and do both things, be vigilant on the outside of the RV and then on the inside as well, well then you can stay ahead of any water leak that takes place on your RV. And any water damage that happens will be minimal. And that way you can keep the value of your RV very high and make it last a long time. And that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time.